Hi, I'm Shiv Aglani. Thanks for checking out our Raise the Line interview series in which me and my co-host, Osmosis Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Rishi Desai, explore how to strengthen our healthcare system with some amazing leaders in medicine, technology, education, and government. And they have some great advice for people starting careers in healthcare as well. I hope you'll watch these highlights and then go listen to the full podcast interview wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Shiv Gulani, and today on Raise the Line, I'm happy to be joined by Jesse Woolley Wilson, who's the CEO of Dreambox Learning, a leading education technology company serving millions of students with an adaptive learning approach to math instruction. In your own words, we'd love to hear what led you to your current role at Dreambox and, and education technology as a whole. Sure. Well, I wish I could tell you that it was a, a planned progression, and it really wasn't. I started my career in banking. And I had grown up uh, always volunteering, doing some community work. It was just part of the family ethos. My father came here from Haiti in 1956, so pre-civil rights. And we really were um, encouraged to do everything we can to focus on education and to try to expand educational opportunity for those less fortunate. And when I got to Manhattan, when I was working in banking, I kind of just felt like something was missing. So I remember taking the A train up to Harlem to tutor middle schoolers who were brilliant. They, were, they lived in really challenging situations, but they were brilliant. And I said to myself, brilliance exists everywhere, but opportunity does not. And I'm gonna figure out a way to use my talents and skills to try to democratize learning opportunity, to try to unlock learning potential of individual kids, really, so that we could unlock their life potential. And I remember calling my parents, you know, when you call immigrant parents and you say you're gonna, you know, leave investment banking, you don't necessarily get a high five. And I said, I found my calling. I'm gonna do something in education. They said, oh, you're gonna get a PhD. I said, well, no, not a PhD. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out a way to help learning guardians to help kids. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean you're going to be a teacher? Well, I don't really know. Because in, when I got out of business school in 1990, a lot of people like us didn't go into education technology. So it was a very formative space. So it was very risky. So my advisor at HBS told me that I should, you know, get a shrink and to work it through because people didn't do that and blow up their careers. But it occurred to me that I was going to pursue perhaps a different kind of wealth and that I was going to be able to commit myself to something, even if it was really, really hard, because I knew that the opportunities I had extended from the zip code that my parents could raise their kids in. And that seemed like that wasn't good for those kids in Harlem. That wasn't good for their communities. I would argue it's not good for America and it's not good for the world. And so if we could figure out a way to unlock learning potential, we could harness human capability. And that was it. I kind of had a... And, an epiphany, and I started out at Kaplan and never looked back. You know, if you were a student, whether it's K-8 K or K-12 or college, what are some advice um, that you'd wish you could hear from someone during this really transformative and unprecedented time? So this the answer might surprise you. If I were a child now, I wouldn't want people talking to me about technology. I would want people to listen to me and treat me as a human being with dignity and respect and to know that I've been through trauma. I've been through some kind of trauma. My parents are stressed. We, maybe my parent has lost a job. I need to go back to school because that's where I get my meals or that's where I get my support from a le learning guardian because I'm special ed or that's where I get uh, social emotional um, services from school psychologists. That's where I get my shots from the nurse. We have to treat these kids like they're human beings and make sure that we understand that they have to be in a state of readiness in order to learn. And that means it's a Maslow's hierarchy. We have to make sure they're secure. We have to make sure they're safe. We have to make sure that they are well-fed and that they are healthy and therefore ready to learn. Thanks for watching this preview of Raised Line. To hear the full interview, check out all of our podcasts and subscribe to the series, please go to osmosis.org forward slash raise the line podcast or listen wherever you get your podcasts.